see? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Please, oh. that's what I did for my life. That's uh -huh. what I did. You worked mm -hmm. hard. Oh, yeah. Oh, I enjoy my aunt all, 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 all her life. And the shop, we will go to the casino. We will, uh, around 12, 30, she will come by me and say, are oh, you ready? I say, yeah, and she said, so you want to go eat dinner now? She said, yeah, I'm going to go eat dinner now. So after we will finish eat dinner, and so she said, you ready? I say, yeah. Now she have $100 in her hand, she will make change. And so she always shows, she, uh, uh, I don't know if you go understand that, right? I will say it like this. Oh, so go ahead, play your machine. I, I know where I'm going at. Don't worry about me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Miss Woods was uh, a Carmel. She was my grandfather's uh, sister. And uh, my memory is, uh, she was 104 at the time. And she had a roommate. And uh, the lady was having therapy, so the therapist asked me, how old was she? And uh, I said, 104. She was so mad at me. She goes, oh no, Linda, I'm not one folk. I said, yes, you are. She goes, no, I'm not. And she stuck to her ground. <laughs> so that's my me memory of her. <laughs> Well, they got a lot of stories, but when I came up, I was around the older people a lot. So my grandfather had Miss Paul, which was her brother. So when I'd be bad to school or cut up or whatever, I had to go stay over there. So we would go pick the coins. We'd make $25, I'd get $2, and he'd keep the 23 but I didn't done all the work. I had to go set her hair once a week. <laughs> then after her set her hair, uh, call her, you can you know, pass the dust mop, you know. And, and thus, I said, okay, Tony. Then when I was finished, she said, well, yeah, I'm going to pay you $5. I said, Tony, I don't want your $5. So at each time, I had to say, I don't want $5. Just keep you doggone $5. <laughs> well, the first time I met Miss uh, Ozita Woods was um, when I went to the nursing home uh, with her family to meet her, and they, they wanted her to uh, come and be honored at the City Hall uh, as one of the oldest Karen Crow residents uh, that we had here in Karen Crow. So of course, uh, as the police chief, I was honored to be able to uh, send our police units to the nursing home and, and be able to give her full police escort and uh, to our City Hall for our council meeting where she was recognized and uh, you know, people thanked her for everything that she's ever done here in Karen Crow. And of course, she has a very large family. And be able to speak with her just for a couple of hours that night and listen to some of the stories that uh, she had and that her family had about her history was just amazing. She was just um, always very um, proper and it seemed like, you know, a really a, a, a true lady, I guess, in the sense that um, where she came from so young growing up and, and hard times and, I mean, and to be 105 years old and still going in these days, I mean, um, I, I don't know if, if I'll make it that far, but uh, you know, I, I often think that uh, I could be professional like she was, I guess I could say, <laughs> in her age. To me and to you, I was always a quiet person. And you know, she just lived a quiet life. You know, nothing looked like nothing disturbed her. And that's the, to me, that's, that's what kept her going all these years. Just a quiet, peaceful life. <laughs> I used to look forward once a month on Thursday, I go pick her up and bring her to the casino. <laughs> she started driving in her late 90s and um, like I said, she always had the right of way. So <laughs> if they had a car coming and she had the stop sign, she would just go in the front of the car and turn and <laughs> that was it. Memory <laughs> with my aunt is when we were younger, and my dad used to pick us up at school, either in the buggy or the wagon. And we would stop by her house for water. 
But we couldn't go no further than the post. She would come outside and bring us a glass of water and maybe ask us if we wanted a piece of pie, not a whole pie, a piece of pie. And we was like, well, Daddy, why we can never go into her house? My dad was like, oh, she's real funny, but it's okay. She loves her. She loves y'all. And she kept on doing good. And I think at the age of 96, she went into Evangeline Oaks nursing home. And we, I wouldn't go every day, but at least I try to go at least three times a week to see her and visit her. And on her 100th birthday, when I started and they gave her the key to the city, I'm the one that started all her electricity to make sure that people know that she was still alive. In 105, she was recognized at the city hall. I went to the city hall, Mr. Glenn recognized her and everything else. And I am proud today to say that I was able to do all of this for her. I knew her because I started in January at Evangeline Oaks, and that was my lady ever since. She loved everybody. She spoke her little broken French, that patois, and some English. Wanted to help the other residents, being at 104, still doing what she can do, and then that was just her. Always up, really just a live person. And then that's, really you could just say she was alive. <laughs> she was very, Smiley, always calling me baby when I walked in the door, saying good morning. That's spunky, it's on point. They would tell us that she had a roommate, and her and her roommate would always would like us and stuff like that, because she always would tell her roommate what was on her mind. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's whether you're gonna do it or you're not gonna do it and stuff like that, and we're just gonna live with it like that. You gotta live with me, you in my room. Mm. When I grew up, we lived on the same street, which was called uh, Farmer's Road. So she lived at the end of Farmer's Road. So some of my memories of her, uh, she had a big front porch, and I could remember spending Sunday afternoons sitting on the porch. We had to go visit Tante Zay and Uncle Maurice. I could remember her husband. And being with my grandparents is what helped me learn a little bit of Cajun French. So whenever Aunt Tante would see me, and I'd say, hello, Tante, you remember who I am? And she would say, yes, to Tite à Jacqueline. You know, and that's my mom. They call my mom. Her name's Jacqueline, so we, they call her Jacqueline. So she always remembered my face because I resemble my mom so much. Um, I can also remember um, doing holidays. My mom would pick her up from the nursing home to have some of the holiday meals with us at my mom's house. Um, she was just a great matriarch of the family. Just knowing that I had a great aunt that was 105 was a blessing. She brought the family together. Um, like my cousins were saying, we started celebrating her birthday at the nursing home. We look forward to that every year because the family's so big with the children and the grandchildren and getting to see all the extended family and celebrate with her and she was happy. She was always happy to see everyone, all of us. Since the day she came into the nursing home, they say she's been there eight years, but I've been there 18 years. So she was very loving, very caring, and I always cherish her. Look forward, I always told her I want to be like her. Back in the days, I was like maybe three when I could remember. I first started talking French. It was the only thing I knew for a while. And she taught you French? She taught me French. That was my first uh, language. In a way, you know, I had to talk to her, broken, you know, French and English, stuff like that. Probably in her patois. That French, <laughs> probably. <laughs> but I don't speak the French, <laughs> so I wouldn't know. <laughs> Remember just being a little girl sitting on her porch, just like eating her cakes and pies. 
Yeah, she was a baker. What the pine pie she would make? She would make the uh, pig, uh, fig pies. So I will go to her house, she will make some big cake. That big cake will be on the table. And I couldn't <coughs> wait until she cut me a piece. <laughs> <laughs> so she made cakes. <laughs> Going to the grocery store with her, watching her cook, stealing her shrimp, which I would get punished for. <laughs> Some uh, chicken leg, uh, no, no, chicken wing, uh, 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 French fry, and those all uh, sweet potatoes. Her breakfast and supper would be cornbread and uh, cornbread and milk. Sweet potato, that was her favorite food. She did like cornbread and milk, or just after she ate, or if she didn't want to eat what they actually cooked, bread and milk, just regular bread slices. The best thing she cooked for me was a tongue, a beef tongue, with squash, rice, and potato salad. That, that was almost once a month or twice a month she cooked that for me. Well, well, she loved to dress. She was a pride old lady. She always had a dress on back in the younger days, you know. And then when I got to in about 20 or 30, she started wearing pants. But it was always a dress. At home, when she didn't go nowhere, it was a, a, a house coat. She'd keep that on. Our oh, favorite place was the casino. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo and casino. Oh, my mom was like her. So when my mom was alive, they would tag team together. She was just, she would just tell you whatever was on her mind. And I think I'm that way because my children did tell me I don't have no filter. So maybe I took that after her. She would be here and then she had asked for the music. We was playing the music and it was, she didn't know when I said, turn the music up a little bit more. And then when she heard the music, she shook her little shoulder <laughs> like that. She was ready to dance. Well, just about how simple things used to be here in Karen Crow uh, many, many years ago uh, when she was growing up as a, as a young person here and, and getting started and uh, about how much family meant to her. Uh, and, and as you will see here today, she has a lot of family here. And that was very close and, and dear to her heart was her family. five or six months short of being 106 years old. She was like a, a walk in history, a, a live history of Karen Crow. You know, as long as she could have drive, she was making church on Saturdays. There's no ifs and ands and buts about it. I love you, baby. I love you. Tell her that I love her. I want to be 105. Uh, rest in peace, you've, you've lived a, a good and long life and uh, now you're sitting with the Lord looking over us so please take care of us. <laughs>